practice tee. Now all I'm paying attention to is my set in. I set into the golf ball. Okay, so you put all those things together and you have your arms correct, you have your hands correct, you have your sequence correct, your body is quiet, and your setup is good. These are habits that I create. I practice them, and I think about them when I practice. But when I get on the golf course, they have become a habit. They're only habits. They're not thought processes. I do not mechanically think about them. I mechanically practice them to turn them into the habits. I think once you watch this enough, you're going to find out it seems kind of simple, actually, because it's in an organized fashion. It's simple because it's organized. That's how I would, if I were you, conduct a lot of my practice sessions. That's your main session. Now what I want to do is I, I want to stop the tape and then we're going to put in the section where I'm going to answer all your questions about the golf swing. These are th this is the part of the tape where you might want to watch it whenever you get into difficulty. Other than that, you might not need it. You can always wind back to the beginning and start over and over and over again. But here is a section where I'm going to answer all those things for you, and we're going to have a little fun with this. Okay, thanks. All right, this is a fun part of the video for me, and I'll tell you why. This is where I get a chance to look you right in the eye and tell you that I believe in you. I really dislike all the things that have been said about the golf swing down through the generations that have misled us all. You do understand that 50 years ago people were playing just as good as they do today. Even though we supposedly have better equipment now, better golf balls, golf courses are better manicured, all these instructional videos, all this, this written material on the golf swing, yet we don't seem to be getting any better. And I really do know why. We're not getting the total truce. We're getting pieces of information passed down generation upon generation, and each one gets a little bit more out of text. So this is a fun part for me because, you know, the first video I made, the marketing people told me if I made it any longer than 42 minutes, they wouldn't sell it. So we went ahead and we made all this tape footage and then we had to decide what to cut out. You know, I, right now the more I look at the video the better the job I think we did, but I sure wish that I would have been able to take longer to explain it. You see, I'm absolutely unafraid of detail, as long as it's correct detail. I don't think you can take a complex subject and make it simple if it's actually a complex subject. The way to get it down to its easiest form is to understand it better. Don't hide your head in the sand and hope it goes away because it's not going to. So let's dive in and get all the facts. And I think you will find that once we get all the facts, it then becomes simple. I said at the beginning I, I uh, wanted to call this tape, What's a Moon Made Out of? Well, that's kind of a little joke between my wife and myself. Years ago, we, uh, we went to a place for a different reason than other than golf, and this gentleman wanted to prove to us that we all have misconceptions. So he got us all in this auditorium, and he asked us all to close our eyes and to tell him the first thing that popped into our minds when he said a word, like a word recognition test. So we all closed our eyes, and he said to us, what's the moon made out of? And the whole auditorium kind of broke up, because you can hear the little snickers going on. Well, it's because, without wanting to, or thinking to, we all thought, cheese. Well, I'm suggesting to you that almost all your faults in the golf swing come from a misconception. Now, where did the misconceptions come from? They came from, in my opinion, down through the generations, on a little bit of the story getting left out each generation. I've got to tell you a quick story because this is what I do. Hundreds of years ago,
the Indians had one storyteller in every tribe. Only one person was allowed to tell the stories because they had no audio tapes, they had no videotapes, they had no written material. It was just the stories passed on generation to generation. And they recognized back then that if everyone was allowed to tell the stories, generations from now that story wouldn't be the same one that started as. Well, I'm thinking that this is what's happening in golf. So now that I've got your attention and I've got this videotape, I don't have to take any shortcuts. I can make, take this as long as I want. And what I want to do for you is make it entertaining for you, but I do not want to neglect what the true facts are. are. I'm going to start as we always do with the hands. To me, they're probably the most important part of the whole golf swing. If I get them right, everything else seems to fall into place. The problem that we have is a two-dimensional camera, and we have a guy that's traveling, or has got his golf club traveling up to 100 miles an hour. Your eyes can't possibly see it. So I'm going to go slow, and I'm going to show you what correct is, because if you were to go take piano lessons, guitar lessons, a foreign language, geometry, printing, writing, running, aerobics, gymnastics, they would all go slow. And then they'd learn to go fast later. Golf is the only thing in the world that I know of that people insist on going full speed at first. So I'm hoping the people that buy this tape or watch this tape aren't the kind of people that want to do that because that can't be done as far as I know. So let's slow down and get it right. I'm going to use some terminologies with you. Don't try to memorize them the first time over. You can watch this tape a hundred times. Get one little thing at a time. That's all you need to do. For all you people that are right-handed, I've got to make this in a right-handed terms. I can't make it right and left because it would get confusing to both. So I'm going to make it right-handed terms. The left-handed people are smart enough that they can turn it around and figure it out. They can do that. Okay, so let's start with the right hand. I believe that the whole game is played with my right hand, right side without any left side interference. I teach myself what my right hand is supposed to do. You see, if my right hand does the correct thing, then my left hand will too. So that makes it easier because now I'm not asking you to think about your left hand and your right hand. I'm only asking you to think about your right hand. My left hand arm is inert. It's dead. It doesn't do anything. It follows whatever my right hand does. You see, that way there's no fighting going on. There's absolutely no contest of who's running my swing. My right hand is running it. My left hand isn't. So get the right hand correct. Okay, so let me show you what my hands do during the golf swing. I want that camera to get a really good look at that, if you could, please. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm going to get better and better at it as this video goes on. So relax and be patient with me. That's called bent. It's not called cocked, it's called bent. In my golf swing, I start with my right wrist in a flat condition for all full length golf shots. When I take my club back, it immediately goes to bent. And that's it. It stays there for my entire golf swing. I know the pictures don't show this. I know that the videos don't show this. But I'm asking you to trust me, this is what happens, despite what you think you see on the videotapes. When I hit a golf ball, my hand stays bent. I'm going to do it from several different angles because I've done enough of these videos that I don't trust that camera. It stays bent. I'm using my incline plane board because without lines, Without feedback, you never know exactly how good or how accurate you are. And the difference between you and another player who's trying to do the same thing is the accuracy at which you can do it at and the accuracy at which they can do it at. So your job is to get as accurate